Welcome back to the Man Cave. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a chess and Catholicism. We have three beautiful chess sets here. This is the Canterbury Cathedral chess set, and this is a medieval chess set built on a board that resembles a castle. And uh, this chess set is the modern Staunton chess set. It's ebony and ivory pieces. So as we look at these uh, pieces, um, I'm reminded of uh, the Gospel of John and how the Gospel of John kind of reflects light and darkness. Uh, he uses that ethical dualism and he talks about darkness as a symbol for evil and light as a symbol for good. Now, before I get too far further into the into the whole um, discussion of the moral dimension, I want to make one little point about the knight. So the knight, to me, is the piece that makes the game of chess. It's sort of the wild card. So if you consider how all the pieces move, they're very similar. The one piece that's very different from the way the others move is the knight. So a knight in the center of the board has the capacity to strike at eight different squares all around it. And it, it doesn't move like the other pieces do, either straight or diagonal. It moves in a jump. So it moves two plus one. So it makes the game much more complicated. One of my goals when I play is to knock out the knight first thing. Because you not only have to look at where the knight is about to go, but where he might go on the next move and get you trapped. So the knights really make chess more complex, more fun, and really, I think, make the game what it is. Now, getting back to the moral dimension of the game of chess, how do I connect chess and Catholicism? Well, I would say that the bishop brings us into a connection. So if we look at the medieval chess board and we see the bishop here, knows he has a stole, okay? So the bishop is a priest. Uh, the word bishop is used in the New Testament for the senior clergy. So the bishop in Catholicism is the one that can ordain. He's the source of sacraments. So what else reminds me of Christianity and, and specifically Catholicism? Well, the queen. We have the queen. Catholicism is very famous for devotion to Mary. So we have the queen in the chess uh, board. So what does the queen do? The queen is the most powerful piece on the board. So the queen, as it were, um, is the piece that can move more than any of the other pieces. So the queen uh, in Catholicism is, of course, Mary. And so Mary, in the Gospel of John chapter 2, uh, her request causes Jesus to work his first miracle, which ultimately leads to the cross. Revelation 12, behold, uh, um, the woman clothed the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars and she gives birth to the child who will rule the nations with an iron rod, which is Jesus. So we have these references in John chapter 2 and Revelation 12 to Mary. And so uh, those two pieces to me really point the, the bishop and the queen to me very much point to Catholicism. What else do we have? Well, Christ, of course, uh, is the king of kings. So the king in the game, if you lose the king, you lose the game. So how does this relate to spirituality? Well, if Christ, the king of kings, is in your heart, then you have grace in your soul. But if you lose Christ, the king, from your soul through mortal sin, that's where you get into trouble and can lose um, at the battle of salvation, the spiritual battle. So so there's a connection with chess and Catholicism and spirituality. Uh, so we must keep Christ in our hearts. Now, what about the knights? Well, when we look in history, there's, of course, the Dark Knight. Uh, you know, you hear the stories of the Dark Knight in medieval literature. You have the Dark Knight comes, and he's often portrayed as evil. And then you have the White Knight coming along, often saving the maidens in distress, so you have the light knight. So to me, the knights are a symbol for the angels. So the dark knight would be pointing to the fallen angels, the bad guys. And then the, the white knight really points to our guardian angel and the good angels who help us, like Michael the archangel. So what about the rook or the castle? 
Now, uh, for me, that points to the church. If we look here at the Canterbury Cathedral chess set, this is one of the towers from the church of the Canterbury Cathedral. And so the, for me, the rook is really a symbol for the church. What about the pawns? The pawns really are the people, the Christians. And so what happens when the pawn moves slowly across the board? Well, the pawn eventually gets the other side and the pawn is transformed into any piece it wants to be, except of course the king. So you can turn the pawn into a knight, a bishop, a rook, but most people turn their pawns into the queen. So the pawn becomes much more powerful and transformed at the edge of the board. So too, when we get to the end of life and we go into the next world, into eternity, we get the resurrected body and we are transformed into beings of light and filled with the grace of God and shares in heaven. Now, my book, A Scriptural Guide to Mary, which is published by Queenship here, and um, uh, you can get the book by calling that number or, uh, or going to their website. This book is called A Scriptural Guide to Mary. And so on the back, I have the little intro where I talk about how I'm going to compare her to being the new Eve and so forth. And so um, she was at the foot of the cross, the queen mother, the woman clothed with the son in Revelation 12. And these are just a few keys to the role of Mary in scripture that are explained in the book that make all the difference. From the cross of the son, Mary was the handmaiden who would be queen, the supreme saint of saints who reigns to serve. Suffering in silence, her sacrifice was to watch the redemption of the world and to feel like no one else. Clothed in sorrow at the foot of the cross, she was destined by God to be clothed with the sun in heaven, that faithful with tears on earth would be crowned with stars in heaven. Now, in my book, I have a chapter on um, Mary, the queen of the chessboard of heaven and earth. And so uh, we see the reference in Psalm 45 about the queen standing at the right, you know, in gold. And then I'm just going to read to you a little bit from page... Uh, 99. So for the sake of our spiritual chess analogy, we consider the king as a symbol for Christ and the queen as a symbol for Mary, the bishop as a symbol for the priesthood and the sacraments, the knight as a symbol for the angels, especially our guardian angel, the castle as a symbol for the church and its teachings, and the pawns are a symbol for the average Christian. So don't the pawns rejoice when the queen comes to protect them from the attacks of the enemy forces? So on the chessboard, the queen comes to protect the less powerful pieces, and they are in a sense comforted by her presence. Through the daily rosa, we are comforted and protected by her presence. The king is the most important piece on the board, for if we lose him, we lose the game. We can still win at chess without the queen, but it's much more difficult. The queen brings a powerful protection, for she is the mightiest piece on the board. Mary is the mightiest of all the saints. She helps us lesser saints to be protected from temptations to sin, so we do not lose our souls. Just as the chess player is comforted by having his queen still on the board, so too is the Christian who has the prayers of Mary in the rosary, comforting her, com uh, comforted by the, having the queen of heaven still with him in his fight. For he fights to protect the presence of Christ within his soul from the checkmate of mortal sin. Trying to win the spiritual battle without the help of Mary's prayers is like trying to win a chess game without the queen. It is much more difficult to do so without the help of the queen. So maybe the next time you look at the queen on the chessboard, you might see her as a faint symbol of Mary. And remember your queen in heaven who loves you with the love of a mother. For the queen of heaven waits for you to pray the rosary that she may comfort and protect you on the spiritual battlefield. The importance and dangers of the spiritual battlefield far exceed the size and dangers of the 64 squares on the chess battlefield. In the small pieces of the game of chess, we see a hint of the power of a king and queen in reality. In the spiritual battlefield, we must remember that Christ is the king of kings. Mary is the queen of queens. They are the greatest um, allies in the battle of salvation. The absence of their presence adversely affects our position on the board of life. But their presence together is an eternal royal and winning combination. The eternal majesty of the king and Queen of Heaven is a wonderful thing for us and a great terror to our enemy. Our Lady is the Queen of the Chessboard of Heaven and Earth. Let us move toward her and be kept safe. And I end with a quote from the Song of Songs, chapter 6 and 7. 
Who is this that looks forth like the dawn, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, ter terrible as an army in battle array? How graceful are your feet and sandals, O queenly maiden! So the power of the prayers of Mary are there to protect us in life and also reminded by the power of the queen on the chessboard.